Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship with St. Paul Lutheran Church in Hamlet, North Carolina. I am Pastor Pam Northrup, the pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church. This is Palm Passion Sunday, uh, March 28th, and we are happy to be able to worship together today. Hopefully, you have received your uh, small palm branch in the mail from me this week. I wanted to send you a larger one, but that just wasn't going to work. So, Hopefully you received your small palm branch and can have it nearby um, during our worship here this morning. Um, also in worship, um, well, also serving in worship today is Debbie Webb, Kim Haltewanger, Savea Strong, and Bob Northrup. We are thankful that they are using their gifts uh, to participate in worship. Want to give you a word about Harley. Um, he is improving and we are so thankful um, he's really um, been a miracle dog for us, and um, hopefully he'll be on the road to full recovery soon. I just think it's going to be very slow, but he is doing a great, great job, and we are, we are thankful for God's work in his healing. And so this morning, we gather with the blessing, with the, the palms. We Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. A reading from Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hold up that palm branches that you have there, and I'm going to offer a prayer blessing for the palms. We praise you, O God for redeeming the world through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you. Through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to sing with us as we sing all glory, laud, and honor. If we were in person today, we'd be um, processing into the church, waving our palm branches. So I invite you to wave your palm branches and please join with us in singing. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The multitude of pilgrims with palms before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. 
to you before your passion. They sang their hymns of praise to you now high exalted our melody we raise all glory lord and honor to you redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring their praises you accepted accept the prayers we bring great author of all goodness O good and gracious king all glory lord and honor to you redeemer king to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring amen We join together in the prayer of the day in just a moment as we make our shift from the part of Palm Sunday to the Passion part of Palm Sunday, Palm Passion Sunday together. As we now enter into the contemplation of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading of Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of the Passion according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish for me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. 
Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, which he did not take. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink saying, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. is a Sunday of striking contrast. The first contrast is the use of the word Hosanna. Jesus rode into Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna ringing in his ears. The people came out to greet him. They, they waved their palm branches and laid down their cloaks as they welcomed him, him into the city. The proud crowd proclaimed, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. We often think of the word Hosanna as a, a shout of praise. It's like you're jumping up and down and screaming, Hooray! Hooray! Here comes Jesus. The crowd is excited to welcome him. They anticipate that he will conquer the Romans and establish a new kingdom in the territory, a kingdom where he will be king, just like his ancestor David. With his arrival, the crowd hopes that his presence will return safety and security to the region where they can worship, work, and live without uncertainty and fear. Little did they know that things would, work, would not work out the way they envisioned. You see, friends, the word Hosanna is more than a shout of praise. The word literally means 
God save us. When you break the word down, ho is a Hebrew word for God. San is the Hebrew word for save. Na is a Hebrew way of expressing us. So Hosanna is God save us. In this way, Hosanna is a prayer, a one word prayer. Hosanna, God save us. You see, the people were distressed about the way things were, and they cried, Hosanna. They were fearful of what, the, what lies ahead of them, and they struggled for existence. They longed to be treated fairly, to worship in the temple without worrying about what the Romans would do. So they shouted, Hosanna, and they pleaded, Hosanna, God save us. The second contrast comes when the crowds who greeted Jesus with the words, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, became the same crowds who chose to release Barabbas when given the opportunity. They are the same crowds who shouted, crucify him, when Pilate asked what he should do with Jesus. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, crucify him, crucify him. Remember, these are the same crowds who just a few days earlier shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The third contrast for today is again shown in the actions of the crowds and this time also by his closest friends. We're told that his followers and crowds went before Jesus and after him as they accompanied him into Jerusalem. They showed themselves to be people who could celebrate and cheer him on. Yay, hooray, Jesus is here. They showed themselves to be people who turned to him in prayer. Hosanna, God save us. And friends, they also showed that they were people he couldn't trust. Rather than stand with him, they stood against him. Rather than choose him, they chose Barabbas. Rather than remain with Jesus to the end, they abandoned him. Hosanna, a shout of praise and a sorrowful prayer, turned to crucify him in just a few short days. Crowds whose excitement welcomed Jesus turned to betrayal as many rejected and abandoned him just as he made his way to the cross, to his crucifixion. These are significant contrasts, but also ones that we need to hold lightly. The people prayed, Hosanna, God save us. And friends, in the death and resurrection of Jesus, guess what? God did just that. Let me say that again. In the death and resurrection of Jesus, God saved us just as the people prayed, Hosanna. The people prayed, Hosanna, God save us. And in the death and resurrection of Jesus, God did just that. It wasn't in the way that they expected or the way they wanted. God knew what the people needed. God knew what the world needed. And so God saved us once and for all in the life death, and resurrection of Jesus. You see, in the death of Jesus, this death turned the world upside down. As Jesus gave a loud shout and breathed his last, we're told that the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Hebrews 9 tells us that in the temple, a veil separated the holy of holies, the earthly dwelling place of God's presence, from the rest of the temple, where men, yes, men, worshipped. Women were only allowed to worship in a place set aside for them. Only the high priest was permitted to pass beyond this veil once each year, 
to enter into God's presence for all of Israel and make atonement for their sins. History and Jewish tradition tell us that the veil was somewhere near 60 feet high. Yes, you heard that right, 60 feet high and four inches thick. So tearing it from top to bottom was nothing a human being could do. It was a demonstration of God's power in Jesus for all to see. The tearing of the veil dramatically demonstrated that the death of Jesus, the shedding of his own blood, was sufficient atonement for all sins. It signified that now the way into the Holy of Holies, into God's presence, was open for all people, for all time, both Jew and Gentile. Once more, the death of Jesus turned the world upside down when the Roman centurion, a commander of 100 men and a Gentile, was the first to declare the human, the humanity and the divinity of Jesus when he said, truly, this man was God's son. This man was God's son. Spoken by a centurion, a Gentile in the face of what he saw in the death of Jesus. Beloved, as we walk this journey together through the holiest of weeks, may we offer our hosannas, our praise and our prayers to the one who truly is God's son, the one who died on the cross and was raised by God for the redemption and salvation of the whole human family and all creation. So we praise and we pray, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Merciful God, in Jesus you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Help us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters, from tornadoes and intense storms, and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them and that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer. Grant respite and renewal. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. 
We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, our faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in the words of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So this morning you got to hear Harley letting himself be known that he is here in the room with us. I think he's about ready for us to pay attention to him for a while. Um, so I apologize for his um, participation in our prayer, but it also warms my heart. Uh, to hear him and to know that he is recovering. So thank you for your patience with that. <coughs> there he is again. <laughs> so our Holy Week and Easter plans. Guess what? We're going to be worshiping in the sanctuary on Monday, Thursday, April the 1st at noon and at 6.30 p.m. And also on Good Friday, April 2nd at noon and 6.30. And then on Easter Sunday, April the 4th, we'll worship at 11 o'clock in the sanctuary Please do um, honor our physical distancing and be sure to wear a mask um, so that we can protect each other. Um, we will um, serve communion safely on uh, Monday, Thursday and Easter Sunday, but I am excited to be able to join with you in worship in the sanctuary. Uh, you may want to come a little early on Easter Sunday so that we are not um, um, collecting uh, too many people in the narthex at any one time but we'll be um, helping people come in slowly and not and finding their seats and all of that stuff. So, so come a little early so that we have time to get everyone seated in the sanctuary. And now receive this blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank you for worshiping with St. Paul Lutheran Church today. Um, I look forward to seeing you later this week. Know that I continue to hold you in my prayers and I ask that you will hold us in yours. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>